Hello, everyone. All right, so welcome to Metaphysical Happy Hour. We're so excited to have you here. Um, give us a shout out, say hello in the comments. Let us know that you are here. Um, today, we are super excited. We have Michelle Marie with us. She is um, gonna explain everything about astrology to us. <laughs> right, hi, I'm super excited for the show. I love astrology, so thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you taking the time and the space to share this time. This is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So your website is Astrological Tarot. Is that how you That is, is that correct. AstrologicalTarot.com. AstrologicalTarot.com. So you can check out our guest, Michelle. So I'm excited. So I have a question for you and we'll kick it off. How about that? Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So is it really true that everything's written in the stars? Is that, is that true? Yes, it is. Uh, astrology is, uh, in Vedic astrology, it's called joytish or the science of light. And it can allow us to not only look into what's going on in this incarnation, but also past incarnations and uh, dharmas that we still are, are working on and we can look forward to. So it's really fascinating. And you mentioned dharma, what is that? Uh, dharma is the dharma. path that you need to take for your soul's mission in life. It's doing the right thing. It's following your your soul's mission, so to speak. So interesting, right? And you you do, well, tell us what the difference, because I think um, you tell us you do both. Do you do Western? And I do, I actually started in Western astrology. You started so. in Western, so tell us about that journey and how you. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah. I yeah. started when I was in Girl Scouts. I was nine years old. Girl Scouts? And Yes. Yes. I was nine years old and we were in Hawaii and on this, this camping trip and we were getting our stargazers badge. I just call it that. I don't remember the exact name of it, but um, they set up all of the equipment and we had to identify all of the different constellations. And uh, my friend at the time, my best friend, um, she turned to me and said, oh, that's Delphinus. That's part of Aquarius. And I go, what's Aquarius? And she told me and she goes, and my stone is amethyst because I'm an Aquarius. And I'm like, what's an amethyst? Because I'm nine. And so she explained it to me and I just, I got hooked. So uh, I started going to the library and getting books on it. This was back when you got a little card and you went to the librarian and it's not like you can just look it up online. And right. uh, I, I started studying it. And it was kind of my way of getting to know people because, you know, I wanted to make friends, but I was kind of shy emotionally. So it was my in, you know, to kind of ask people questions and get to know them and guess their sign. So flash forward all the way to college, that's kind of how I got into my sorority. And I even my sorority letters were even like the astrological symbols because, um, I was, you know, I correctly guessed everybody's sign because I've been doing it for so long. And um, so then after that, I worked at a metaphysical clinic while I was in college and I started reading people's charts. And, you know, this was back when, you know, 20 bucks a chart was a lot of money. And um, I would, you know, read people's charts and they would come in and it was, it was so much fun. And then uh, flash forward again, I, uh, encounter a woman's Vedic astrology channel. Her name is Kamala Sutton. And I got hooked. I bought all of her books and I saw that she offered classes. So I started going to conferences and classes and I'm actually taking a, a really awesome class right now. It's called Rules and Interpretations. And we study the yogas and the different vargas or you know, charts. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at now. So it was just long journey of going from Western and into Vedic, but it's absolutely fascinating. And it's kind of my way of relating to and figuring out the world and people and getting to getting to know different, just different people in different situations in a more comfortable way. Yeah, absolutely. I get so jealous of people who got into their gifts or their studies so young. I feel like I missed so much of my life because mine came so later. So super cool that like, and that it clicked for you and it interested you. I think that's just amazing. 
for our listeners who don't know the difference, can you kind of explain what the difference is between Western and Vedic? Is it Vedic? Is that how you say that? Vedic. Yes, Vedic, Vedic astrology. Vedic. You got it. Yeah. So <laughs> most Western astrologers use the tropical zodiac, and that begins with the sign of Aries, and that's at the northern hemisphere of the vernal equinox, and okay. it always starts at around March 21st of each year. Okay. So the Western Zodiac is literally drawn based on the Earth's relationship to uh, fixed and designated positions in the sky and the Earth's seasons. And mm -hmm. Western astrology was actually developed by the Sumerians who settled in Babylonia from 4000 to 3500 BC. And each Sumerian priest or astrologer ruled a different province and dispensed, div uh, sorry, dispensed divine wisdom to their followers. So there's huge like observatories were built. Um, to study the movements of the stars and the planets. So right. by the time the Babylonian culture reached full maturity, they developed what we now know as the modern zodiac, and they developed 12 signs, 12 houses, and each planet was associated with a god or a goddess and a personality. So your birth chart is laid out in a 360 degree circle, and that circle is divided into 12 sign divisions of 30 degrees each. And the signs are divided into three deacons of 10 degrees each. And then those degrees are separations called aspects or degrees of ore. So that's Western. Now we get into Vedic. And Vedic astrology instead uses the sidereal zodiac, not the tropical, which corresponds to what is observable and measurable in the sky. So the sidereal zodiac um, is star-based. It measures the actual astronomical position of the planets against the backdrop of a fixed star constellation. So it's, it's the exact math, the exact angle. Okay. Um, there are 12 houses in both practices. However, the planets um, can be different due to a 24 degree difference because one is based on the uh, seasons, which is Western, and Vedic is on the exact um, alignment with that star because the Earth's ecliptic has changed about 24 degrees um, mm -hmm. since this science was um, developed uh, and recorded. So Vedic astrology is the um, oldest form of astrology. It was developed by the rishis of ancient India, and they were scientists and scribes of um, spiritual texts called the Vedas. And they developed this spiritual science as their way of ensuring a constant renewal and progress of um, spiritual tradition and culture and in just a way of um, calculating things that are, mm -hmm. that are going on in this particular 3D plane that we're living in. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I could go on. Like, this is just my it's, thing. So. It's super fascinating thing. Right? I just remember in my journey taking a class and just being overwhelmed. So the fact that someone could take this and resonate with it and study it so deeply, I just find super fascinating. And let's talk a little bit about that. Like, how important is training if you want to get into astrology and well, what I tell people is everyone has different gifts. Like, for instance, my husband can hold a crystal and tell me what it feels like. I'm like, it's cold, you know, <laughs> so um, I don't really have that gift. So right. I think that one, you, you kind of have to have a little bit of a gift for it. And that could be, you could look at someone's chart and find out if they've studied this in past lives. Oh. Um, you could just have an interest in it. And that doesn't keep anybody, you know, out. Um, what I suggest is um, just, you know, buying books on the subject, okay. reading a lot. Uh, you can go to YouTube. There are a lot of different YouTube channels that you can watch about Vedic astrology or Western astrology, whichever one really resonates with you. Right. And just kind of gradually let yourself um, be immersed in it. You know, I, I tell people that astrology is kind of like trying to take the ocean in, in one gulp, just be one with the ocean and enjoy it is, you know, don't let it cause any anxiety, especially when you get into the math, just uh, do it, do it in a way that, um, you know, makes you, makes you passionate, makes you want to keep studying it. And, you know, I know that yeah. there are many people that study Vedic and Western astrology, uh, they get into it for different reasons. They become beautiful artists. They mm -hmm. um, become, you know, practitioners. Uh, they become teachers. They can take it in many different directions too. Or they just they get into it and go, "Wow, I know a little bit more about myself or my family or my spouse." Or, "Oh my gosh, I don't know anything about this. I'm going to go to a Vedic astrologer or a Western astrologer and learn more." So you can take it from many angles. Just what you're comfortable okay. with and what you're interested in. I love that. Like so. Let's say I'm a person who knows nothing. What can a, what can my chart tell me? Like, what kind of information is there? Like, how can you, how oh, do you guide people via okay. the charts? Well, uh, the first thing I look at, if, if you want to go for the full steroid 
Vedic chart is oh, I look at the, the Rossi, that's this incarnation. And what it tells me is, you know, what you were like when you, you landed here, when you were birthed here. And then I go into the Navamsa, which is your D9. And that tells me your Dharmic path, how you relate to other people, what your relationships are going to be like in this incarnation. Then I can go deeper and deeper into other charts and look at children. I can look at past lives. I can look at uh, uh, your career and you know what your particular strengths are there. I can look at your spiritual strengths and, and weaknesses. I can look at your Shaktis or your spiritual gifts that you've been given this time around. Uh, it's, it's really is endless. I can even, even look, I can even, even look into what kind of car you could expect. Really? Yeah. It's the D27. I, so <laughs> yeah, whether you're going to be, whether you're going to get a luxury car or like a kind of a fast sporty car or something more dependable in your life. Yeah. It sits in there. So I mean, it used to be horses and, and modes of transportation, but yeah. back then, but you can actually take that knowledge and, and put it into a more modern context. And that's something that I learned from my, my, uh, my guru, Kamala, who's, um, who's my teacher in Vedic. So I think it's so interesting. I think the one thing that I do before the show, we talked about uh, me getting a, a Vedic rating. The mm -hmm. one thing I remember is that I was going to experience like, um, back issues. So it says health come up too. Yes, you can actually look that that is exactly right. Uh, the different parts of the body are owned by different signs. And depending on what Mahadasha or Subdasha you're in, you can determine uh, what's what when that's going to manifest. You can okay. also determine what part of the body you really need to take better care of as well. Wow, that is so fascinating. I'm going to tell um, my followers on TikTok to go to the Facebook page and ask us questions. Any qu whatever questions that you guys have about Western astrology, Vedic astrology, just kind of whatever, head on over to the Facebook page, um, the Red Couch Medium or Odd Ends with Cassie, and we'll answer some of those questions. We have an expert on the line, um, just ready to we, kind of answer. We, we do have a comment from one of our friends, um, Alicia is saying, I want to know what type of car is meant for my future. <laughs> of course yeah. Alicia would ask that. I have to look at of your- Of course she would. Stuff. Of course, <laughs> we're so glad you joined us today. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. She's adorable. You know what I find interesting, and I don't know, I know this becomes a specialty in your line of work, but people even use this to um, like solve cases, don't they? Isn't there? They like, do. Yeah, like they can come up with the type of characteristics of the person who did the crime, like down to the detail of what car they drive, I remember. I actually am doing a study, my own little personal study right now on serial killers. Are you? So I'm, I'm studying the charts of ser serial killers and I'm looking for patterns. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that kind of interests me just to kind of oh, see yeah. you know, how, yeah. how those different personality types come up, why they're here, what their, their purpose is, what Dharma they're working through, because it's such an extreme uh, expression of the human and the, the human genome. You know, it's, it's really interesting, but. No, I would find that study interesting too, right? Um, oh yeah. Because and is it planned that they go through this stuff and then act on free will? Like you know, it just it poses so many questions mm -hmm. to why we're here and all of those things. So it just blows my mind. Um, just going back to our listeners too, like what can they expect? Like how would they book an appointment with you? How long does it take? You know. Well, I. I usually, I do not go under an hour, especially for the first session. I recommend two. Uh, and that allows me to really get into your main charts, which are your Rossi and your Navamsa chart and uh, do a, a deep dive into that. And then another thing that I do afterwards is I say, you know, if there are questions that you have for me, like, should I get this new car? Should I move to this new place? I'm with this new person in my life. Are they a match or, you know, what's going on there? Um, they can follow up and I already have all of their information ready. So it's something that I can just click right back into and um, give them advice on. Uh, additionally, um, I do tarot scopes because I do incorporate the tarot into my astrology practice because it does tell a story. So if people come to me with very specific questions, um, for instance, I can't tell you who you were in a past life, but I have different cards that can kind of give me some clues. Conclues so, to it. Yeah. They just, they're kind of a supplement, like a supplement to the practice. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and they can go to astrologicaltarot.com. Now I don't have PayPal buttons set up on there because um, every 
I found that every person who came to me had a completely different situation. And so mm -hmm. I said, let's do an hour, let's do two hours, and I'm going to address these questions, or I'm going to look at this part of your chart. And I, it's, it's kind of like a catered service. Okay. It's like an a la carte. So you come into the restaurant and you order something off of the menu, or okay. I go and I make something special in the kitchen. It's, okay. it's more like that. So one of the most common questions I get as a psychic medium is the whole soulmate question, right? Oh yeah. Is that something like, can you tell when, where, how? Yes, what they you like? can actually, you can, you can tell the best time for meeting uh, okay. your karmic soulmate. Your karmic you can, soulmate. so like for instance, my uh, Jupiter Mahadasha, Jupiter's in my seventh house. That's when I met my husband. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it was uh, Rahu's on my ascendant, which is opposite the marriage house. So that was the actual sub dasha that I met him in. So it, it, it aligned. Um, and you could also uh, look at the best like, time to really start and delve into your career and when to okay. study, you know, because okay. that's there too. There's a balance there. You can mm -hmm. look into when children are coming on the way. Okay. You can, uh, yeah, again. So it's, it's a it's, lot, it's, endless. Like mm -hmm. it truly is written in the stars, right? It's really, so yeah. we do have some questions that are coming up in the chat. Okay. Um, one is from Courtney Link, and she's asking, is it true Geminis and Sagittarius are more prone to be serial killers? Actually, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I found that out. The like, Well, in, in Vedic, you actually have to go into, because it's the 24 degree difference. So it would be more right. like end of Taurus and then into Capricorn in the Vedic right. chart. But yeah, I found that a lot of, of Geminis and uh, some Capricorns and Sagittarius are, a lot of them just happen to be serial killers. It's really interesting. And they're different types of serial killers. Like I find that Gemini serial killers are more like, um, persuasive and social to oh. get their to hook their victims, whereas like uh, like more I'm like sorry. Sagittarians and Capricorns are more cerebral, like they they plan things out really well. So it's it's interesting that she brought that up because I I am studying that right now. <laughs> that is crazy. Like give us yeah yeah. Are you studying like the famous serial killers? Oh yeah, like for okay. instance, um, it this started because my my husband was showing a house and. It happened to, it was just, he got a weird feeling about the house and the guy gave him a, his card on the way out and he's like, wait a minute, Bundy. And he Ooh. looked and he had literally walked into Ted Bundy's house. His room was the same. It was literally just like an 80s, like old computer with like mystery and, and killer novels, like all the way up to the ceiling. I guess he was a big reader. Wow. Um and he said he like he wouldn't go into the basement. And my husband's fearless. And so I was like, why would you go to the basement? He goes, I don't know. I just got some really bad energy from that house. And I just, then we found out later it was Ted Bundy's home. So anyway. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, we could talk all day about this stuff. I love um, the whole serial killer thing. Cassie. Uh, yeah. So um, our next, the next question that we got was, does the time of day in which someone's born play a really big role in their chart? Yes, it does. It can determine whether or not you have a certain type of yoga. And when I say yoga, I'm not talking about like getting on a mat and stretching out. I'm talking about an energy that uh, you can experience in this incarnation can sure. develop. For instance, if you're born at night versus during the day, gender also comes into it ah. as well. Okay. So... Uh, additionally, um, you know, yeah, there's, so there, yeah, there's different energies that come with time of day and you can actually, your entire dharmic chart can change by a second. Really? If, yeah. In yeah. certain, like if you're like right on the end of one nakshatra or one house or, and I, I can explain what a nakshatra is. So yeah. in Vedic astrology, nakshatras are subdivisions of the zodiac signs. And this offers a deeper analysis of the um, planet placed in that particular zodiac sign. So each zodiac sign is divided into two and a half nakshatras. And in total, there are 27 nakshatras in Vedic astrology distributed along the 12 zodiac signs. So they all have their own really unique characteristics. And some practices also cover the nakshatra um, Abjit, which is tw the 28th nakshatra. And it's used in some techniques, but not for needle interpretation, but you can use it in other techniques. For instance, um, Barack Obama has it. Um, uh, and then you have like, the Mahadashas and everything else. But Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> um, so, actually, we got another question. It's, okay, um, is a not chakra 
and I'm going to say that I'm trying so hard. Chakra, to that's fine. Um, chakra. Like yeah. When someone is a cusp sign. Mm -hmm. um, a nakshatra is your Vedic sign. So it's, it's, it's your Zodiac sign. And if you're, you're on a cusp, um, it's, it's so, uh, it's so defined in Vedic astrology that you're either one or the other, but you can, you know, take on just like in Western astrology, the attributes of, of both signs, but it's, it actually, because it's more specific down to the degree, um, you either are in that nakshatra or you aren't. So for instance, like Ashlisha uh, nakshatra is between um, 60, 16 degrees and 40 minutes of cancer and 30 degrees of cancer. And that's, if you want to find out what your um, nakshatra is, you basically take your Western sign, your Western moon sign, because nakshatras are based on the moon, and you uh, minus 24 degrees, and then you can look up the nakshatra there. And there's also calculators online if you don't want to do the math. So wow. just nakshatra calculator, and you can find out what it is. Yeah. So. Very cool. So cool. It's actually, it's actually kind of interesting because I just recently found out, like, I, I've always known the day and the place of birth, but never the actual time. And as we were doing moving my parents, my sister just randomly one day sent me a photo and was like, here's your birth certificate. And I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, yeah. I know I always miss the time, too. So time is super specific. Yes. And Vedic. <laughs> Yes, it is. Perfect. Because we go, use, go ahead. there's 16 Varga charts and we go 60 divisions deep. You can go 108, but 60 is what it really is. the. So it's basically a 60th of a degree. That's how, that's how deep we go into the chart. You guys go. So do you ever play with it and use it to predict the future? Like, Let's talk oh, about yeah. the presidential election. Did you know who was going to win? Oh, yeah. We actually had a meeting about it. It was at no the way. Vedic conference that I went to. We were just like, oh, my gosh, Donald Trump's going through Kitu, and Kitu's going to go right over him. And that's like, okay, so Kitu is basically the south node. And in Vedic astrology, he's headless. Oh. So he takes away. He okay. removes. Okay. He removes. So mm -hmm. there's Rahu, which is the, the head of the celestial snake. And he is kind of like... Um, He's all of our desires, but he doesn't have a body. So he's insatiable. He's just like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And it doesn't really go anywhere. So he's okay. desire. And then you have Kitu, which is the body of the celestial snake. And that's just, that's moksha. That's spiritual enlightenment. That's, you know, taking away of things. That's, you know, making us penniless so that we turn within to God. Yeah. Right. And Kitu passed right over and we're like, he's not going to get it. And boom, that's what happened. So it was really interesting. We also predicted the coronavirus. We just didn't know how it was going to manifest because all of the um, planets, we had a stellium on December 26th and What's all of the planets, a stellium is um, a group of planets that all group up together in the sky. So okay. they all meet up in the same nakshatra or just a few okay. degrees from each other. So we literally all, all of the, many of the planets met up in Mula nakshatra, which okay. is ruled by Nirti. You know, Nirti is another form of Kali, which is the goddess of destruction, chaos. Okay. So we're like, oh gosh, what's coming? Yeah. So it's harsh. It's, it's magic. It's awakening. It's losses. It's transformation. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, she, she's, you know, she's a very chaotic goddess. So we were like, what? It's literally the power to destroy is the Shakti. And so we're like, okay, well, there's this um, death energy coming through. What is it going to look like? And it was the coronavirus. And then the cure came out when we had a stellium in Shravana. And Shravana actually represents the ear of Brahma. And Brahma is the creator. So when um, a, a chaos god or goddess comes out and just and wreaks, you know, chaos Havoc. takes away because, you know, that we're, we're this plane of existence that we live in, you know, we, we create, uh, we preserve and we destroy. So when the destroyer's work is done, the uh, creator comes back and he restores some of the, the energy back. Okay. And so that would be Shravana. And that's about the time that the um, vaccine came out and things started getting back to normal. Things started opening up. So there's ways of looking at uh, charts on a very personal level where you can really get deep into someone's karmic journey, soul journey, dharmic journey. Um, and there's another uh, more macro approach that you can take to it in predicting events. So yeah. I would be doing that all day long. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fascinating. It and is. I, yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. Um, like, TikTok people say it's fascinating. Yeah. 
Uh, we definitely have uh, another question and it's it kind of, um, how did you guys pinpoint what your gifts were? I know I have gifts, but don't know how to pinpoint it. So you mean like looking at, at astrology, how to pinpoint what your gifts are? I think she's, yeah, she just, she had a reading with me too. And like, you know, when you, I'll, I'll kind of help. Like you knew it was astrology. I knew it was medium. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. How do we like, you know, you're something, but you don't know what you are, you know? Well, yeah. I look at people's charts and I tell them what their gifts are. You can also get, if you look at the ancestral charts, there are gifts that you can get from your family lineage. For instance, I looked at my husband's chart and he's really strong in mathematics and engineering and his brother worked for NASA and his, uh, and then he works in his, his, um, his father was also a tinkerer. His, his grandfather was in real estate, which is another thing that that's in his chart. Um, and so there's, there's ancestral things that, that can kind of come through. And then he's a computer programmer. So that's that mathematic engineering type of yeah. mind. So for me, it's looking at a chart and then just telling somebody, look, this is what I see that you're really good at. This is when I see the career really taking off. Um, this is how much money I think you're going to make at it. Like for instance, I was told that I was going to be a great joytish practitioner, but I wasn't going to make a lot of money at it. But this other part of my chart was where I was going to make money. Okay. So, yeah. So that so helps you kind of to make decisions, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I know for me, like personally, getting into this work and doing this stuff, I was never on the, the far woo woo end, right? Cause I'm super analytical. So mm -hmm. for me, I guess that's part of my personality. That's why mediumship clicked because I can prove it, right? So I guess it takes like your personality and it takes that kind of stuff. So I just think it's interesting, but I always knew it was mediumship. Like I had no doubt, but we talked before the show and like when you're new to this kind of stuff, you just want to dabble in everything. And that's what I would just tell my listeners, at a physical store somewhere, take a class, take Reiki, do a little bit of everything and you will feel the draw to what you're supposed to be doing. I just, that's kind of what I feel about it. And you? Yeah. Well, we were talking about this earlier and you made a really good point. You said, you know, you started off with all of these different things and, mm -hmm. and Vedic astrology was one of them. And you just went, it just kind of went over my head. It didn't really click. And then you went into all these other fields until mm -hmm. something clicked for you. Like mediumship, I couldn't even begin to understand how that works. Like it's just, but Joytish Vedic astrology, it just clicks. So everybody's different. We all have these beautiful gifts that we can contribute to the collective and really Really just dipping your toe in every little every little stream and figuring out what works for you is yeah. I think the, the key to finding your happiness and, and finding you know what works and mm -hmm. I was told that this was my practice after I had got into it so I mean it was just kind of confirmation but yeah. uh, you know sometimes you, you really got to experiment with things and, and not be afraid to, yeah. to oh, get absolutely. involved and, and to learn yeah that's what I tell my clients you have to go like they are People will come to me asking me what their purpose is. And that's that's your journey to figure out and to go find out, especially if you have gifts, like go tip your toe in all the waters and then it'll click. You'll just know because it'll ignite something within you and it'll become a passion. Yes. Like I took the astrology of who I took tarot. No way I wanted to learn that. But then I did mm -hmm. mediumship. And I'm not saying that wasn't easy to learn. That was tears and sweat and training and training and training. But for some reason, because it clicked with me, I was willing to do the work, right? Yeah. I wasn't willing to do the work on astrology because it just didn't click. Although I yeah. find it yeah. fascinating, you know? Yes. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And I, it helps me appreciate your gift and you appreciate mine, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's so much work. We just don't wake up one day and here we are, right? And I, I think <laughs> that's so important to tell people, like, my TikTok family because I've been I've been um, attacked recently. Like oh. I, no, it's okay because with the territory, but you just don't wake up one day and decide I'm just gonna go start reading people. Like yeah. there's yeah. a journey. We both know that there's a journey. We like it took five years to get where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And again, blood, sweat, tears, money put out, oh. right? Crying, not sure. Yeah, classes are cheap. <laughs> yeah, they are not cheap. It's not cheap. And so um the people who are doing it and succeeding and have put, trust me, we put in the work and the tears and, and nothing came easy. If you want anything, it's because you have to have a desire to want to do it. And so oh, yeah. I don't know. I can get on a soapbox about that, but that's just my feeling. You know? Yes. Yeah. Any questions? Any readers got any anybody? 
Um, so tell us a little bit more. You, you said Joytish? Joytish. Joy that. Yes. She's like Joytish. It's just another word for, for Vedic astrology. It's the science of light. And um, it, it kind of goes into the, the doshas, so to speak. And the doshas are kind of what is um, encapsulating us from mm -hmm. the divine source of the Atman within in, in the, like the Vedic uh, texts. So um, another kind of way of looking at it is, um, so there's the, the Anamaya and that's the food sheet, that's the body. And we study the D1 through the D12 charts to look at that. Mm -hmm. And the food sheet is just basically your physical body, what you've been given in this incarnation, what we're walking around in, okay? And it goes all, the D12 ends with your ancestral line because you do choose your family coming into this birth, you know, either okay. to uh, work out some karmic relationships, either to mm -hmm. get through some blocks, you know, for some of us who've had really difficult families and parents, it's to grow spiritually and then, you know, separate ourselves or, you know, just depending on what your path is. Um, and then there's pranayama, which is the vital breath sheath. And that's the D16 through the D24 charts. And what that tells you is that's kind of a more, um, prana means um, vital air. So that's just a little deeper than the body. Okay. And then you have the monomaya. And the monomaya is the mental sheath. That's the mind. And that's the D27 and D30. And that tells you a little bit about how your mind works from, from incarnation to incarnation and how it's developed. And then you have the um, Vijnanamaya. <laughs> my my husband's better at saying this than I am. Say the word. And that's the knowledge sheet. That's like Yana Yoga. That's the D40, the D45. That's how, that's, that's, that's how your, um, your knowledge and your wisdom have developed, especially when it comes to spiritual wisdom. And then you have Ananda Maya, and that's the bliss sheet. And if you have that, you're the Buddha, you're Steve Ananda, you're Jesus. So you're just walking around God realized, meaning that basically um, you and God are one. So the only thing really keeping us from the divine source, according to this, the science of light, is we have to chip away at the darkness of the ego in order to reveal the light within. And that's what Joytish goes into study. And so, yeah, I can tell people all about their personalities and their gifts and their strengths and all these other things. But the main point of Joytish is to teach people the remedies and how to get closer to the divine source or the light within themselves so that they could continue to grow on their spiritual journey. So, yeah. While you were talking, I heard potential. So mm -hmm. what you're really saying, here's the potential you have, but it's like up to you to do yep. the work, right? To walk through the doors of opportunity. Like here's what the potentials of your life could be, such as gifts. But like we say, we all have some spiritual gifts. Um, like we, um, it's mm -hmm. all, everybody has a potential, but it's up to you, right? Like, like free will, it's up to you to seek it out and to do the things you have to do to get there, right? Yeah. yeah, and we're all here for different reasons. reasons. There's yes. um, there's there's a number of focuses. Like we talked about Dharma. Now Dharma is just doing the right thing. It's fulfilling your spiritual your uh, spiritual responsibilities. That's that's one path. Another path is Artha. That's activity on the material plane. So that's right. like desires on a more practical level, goal oriented. It's it's more religious. So you're just you're getting the stuff done that you need to get done here on a more three right. D sense. And then there's um, Kama, which is passion. You know, it's um. It's creativity, it's children, it's pleasure, it's in just enjoying life. That could be the reason for your incarnation this time. Mm -hmm. And then there's moksha. Now that's the highest degree of perfection. That's spiritual realization. That's the final destination of uh, eternal bliss. That's devotion to the all-pervading Atman within. So it just depends on where you're at in your spiritual journey and what path you've been put on in this incarnation. And it takes many incarnations to get there, but you know, we're all here and we're all students. We're all so students. This yeah. is Earth School. That's what I tell everybody. You're at Earth School. Yes, this that is it. correct. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Yeah, this is so interesting. Thank you for coming on. Like, like I just find it fascinating. Fascinating. Oh, I'm glad I'm not boring you. <laughs> no, the whole and the whole serial killer talk. <laughs> because I'm a crime show queen. I <clears throat> love crime shows. Like, mm. well, you're so, a medium. So exactly, like. Like it's kind of morbid. I remember by my ex-husband. I used to watch Snapped. You remember that show Snapped? Where I've heard women oh women yeah, kill yeah, their yeah, husband. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so one time my ex-husband was sober and I was watching Snapped and he really was concerned for my well-being because I just love that show. <laughs> just, are, you, are you sure it was your well-being or his? <laughs> 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 but it's like so interesting to me and fascinating. And the I guess being a medium, I'm a mental medium, so the brain fascinates me too. And, 
this all plays out and well, works together. That's what Vedic astrology is all about. It's 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 look because the mind is the most important. Mind. Yeah, it's the, the, that's where they look at the moon sign. And a okay. little bit of Mercury too, because that's the intellect. But yeah, the moon is that kind of determines where you're at. So that's yeah. really neat. So fascinating. Well, last chance. We have any questions, Cassie, out there? Anything? Um, let's see. I no. I, I think I think we're good. I think we've covered most of the most of the questions. Um, the question no. I, oh, you've got I a question? one quick question. Yes, yeah, yeah. because like, because of the soulmate thing. So if somebody came to you about the soulmate, would you mm -hmm. want the? Would you need the other person's birthday and time? That helps. Time? That helps. I can look at the Kundli, and that helps. But I can also just look at their chart and tell them the timing. Timing. Okay. Yeah, I would look at their first and their seventh houses in both in the Vamsha and in the Rossi, and I could tell the timing from from those points. And I would Perfect. also look at the lords that they occupy, and I would look at the Mahadasha and the Subdasha that they're currently in right now, and then give them a good idea of when they can meet yeah. that person. Tracy speaks birth certificate of new date. That's <laughs> I'm going to find his birth certificate. <laughs> um, in the dating world at the moment, and it's crazy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh, I bet with COVID. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenally crazy. <laughs> oh, it's been a joy to have you. Are we going to start doing readings? Want to do readings next? Yeah, let's do some readings. Let's do it. Very All nice. Right. Anybody wants a reading, go off on to Facebook, the Red Catch Medium, or Odd Ends, and we will pick randomly people and we'll pull some cards. I'm feeling like using my deck tonight. So Ooh, what's your deck? So they're called Gosh. Messages from Above. Oh, that's beautiful. So yes. I'm gonna use my deck. So which means whatever card I pull for you, let's just say that that would be your guides, your angels, your loved ones, giving you what you should be working on let's say for the next six months so we'll do it that way for me and then whatever you're gonna pull for you will make it all different and interesting yeah okay well i'm gonna be using monte farber's karma cards and they have mm -hmm. the astrological houses the astrological planets and as well as the signs so i could go into um you know what those things mean and then if any of the listeners want to look up their chart afterwards they can look up that particular planet or house that i pull up and see where that is so that one's like a plan to me okay. all right so terry phillips is going to be our first person hi terry hi terry i'd love a reading terry phillips okay dun, dun, dun. let me pull a card i'm gonna pull a couple all right so i pulled two cards for you terry and again these are from my messages from above deck and the first card and this would be like what your guides angels um even loved ones on the other side say that you should probably work working on. And the first card I got for you is forgiveness. And it says it's a single act that can set your soul free. So if you're holding on to anything about with anyone, forgiveness isn't about them. It's about you and not letting them run space in your head anymore. So your focus will be on forgiveness and learning to forgive and working, not learning really, I would say, but just working towards a place of forgiveness. I tell you, it's helped my life completely getting to that point where I forgive for my trauma. I don't ever forget it, but I've forgiven it and letting it go. And then your second card you got is the acceptance card. And it says, surrender to what is and what will be. I think sometimes in life, we just have to accept what things are. And once we get to a place of acceptance, and this kind of goes for the grief process too. You know, at the end of the grief process, the last the last um, thing is acceptance, just accepting where people are at, accepting who they are. For me, on my mediumship journey, accepting that people don't believe in it, accepting that our journeys may be different and that's okay. We don't, I don't have to prove every day that I'm right. And so just coming to a place of acceptance. So acceptance and forgiveness are your two cards. I'm gonna hand it over to Michelle. Okay, we are connected because I got Pluto. Ooh, what does that mean? Okay. <laughs> Pluto is death, rebirth, and transformation. Okay. And Pluto just went into retrograde. So that's some shadow work. So that goes right into letting things go. And we just actually, Pluto also um, is in the eighth house, which is Scorpio. 
Now, Scorpio, um, we just had a, a, a full moon in that and Pluto just went retrograde today. So um, basically doing that shadow work, deep digging deep inside of yourself and finding a place to forgive before you can move on to the next stage of your development. That's what that transformational process is like. And, you know, it can be kind of yucky and, and emotional and it's not fun, but it really can turn you into um, the beautiful spirit that you're meant to be. And, um, you know, the way I describe uh, Plutonian energy is you could either be like the scorpion where you sting people and go back into your cave, you know, and choose not to forgive and just lash out at the people around you and not let, let it go. Or you could be the eagle and you can rise above it and look at it from a more, um, uh, I don't want to say emotionless, but just detached way of looking at it. Separate yourself from the emotion that you had in that particular time in your life. Um, and then the Phoenix, what that can allow you to do is rise from the ashes of those experiences um, through the forgiveness that you were talking about. So Absolutely. I see a lot of transformation coming your way and it's going to make you a really big, beautiful soul. Yes. All roads. I'm just going to say this really quick for everybody listening. All roads lead to healing. That's it. That's what you should be going for. People call me about when's once he coming back, I always go back to your own healing, right? Everything just goes back to your own retrospect, introspect, healing. That, that's it. That's, it's easy. We make it hard, but it's not. So, <laughs> all right, next. All right, let's go to. Um, we are going to go to Res Renata Zimmer. Oh, Renata, I love her. Oh, Renata, Renata, Renata. Okay, so Renata, I've got two cards for you. This one is, I think you're in, an, I'm going to say another growth phase because I already feel like you've been in several, but I think you're embarking on a new phase and a new understanding and a new way of thinking and you're starting to grow again. This seems to be um, pretty repetitive in your life. You're constantly learning and constantly growing is who you are. And so on the card, it says, forget all behind you. So that's what growth is all about. And it's really interesting that I have the heart on this card. So I'm going to go in and say this has to do with relationships and love and just growing from that spiritual place um, of unconditional love, because I believe that's what we're all here for. We're all here to learn about unconditional love and be unconditional love and receive unconditional love. So that may be your next journey is to go to a place of unconditional love. I also got the conflict card for you too and so this could be some internal conflicts that you may be having but again i think we as humans make things super difficult and it's really easy you have two things to work on be happy additional love and so whatever conflict you're feeling go back to those two things is it is it making me happy and am i learning unconditional love and if you can balance that then you have all the answers that you've been seeking truly all right, Michelle. Oh, Tracy, that was beautiful. Well, you said conflict, and the first card I got was Mars. <gasps> so Mars is the planet of conflict, conflict, but he's also the planet of, he's the energy that, that we need to fulfill our ego, to fulfill our wishes, our wants, our needs, our desires. It's that Manipura energy. It's, you know, it's that energy to get out and get things done. And so I asked for a little bit of direction and I got Leo. Now, Leo is how you shine in the world. Okay, Renata, this is, mm -hmm. this is your stage. It's also strength. Okay. So um, having that self-confidence, you know, growing that heart, that spine as you move forward in this new, uh, I don't know, I, I'm getting a project that you're working on, like, and you're really, really dedicated to it and you're putting a lot of energy into it. Um, so, you know, Tracy, you, you covered the relationships and I, which I think is why this conflict card came up, but I'm also getting that there's a project that you're working on that is really going to help you shine and show who you are to the world and spirits telling me that you're on the right path. So believe in yourself, have that self-confidence to, um, move forward and the world is your stage. Oh, I'd love it. You know, just one card had thrown out, but I was only pulling two. So I put this under, but it was the ego card too. So again, ah! in like... <laughs> We're in alignment. That's all I'm just going to say. So there you go. Leo's all about the ego. <laughs> it is. It really is. Even when we shine, it's still about that, right? Oh, yeah. It's all about us. So, okay. Our next one is going to be from, with uh, Courtney Link. She says it's her first time here and she's watching us from Texas. Oh, hey, Courtney. I'm from Texas, too. 
Woohoo! Yay! Thanks for coming. Yeah, on. that front. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, one jumped out at me, so I'm just gonna use it. Okay, here we go. So the card that jumped out at me was. So to me, um, that just talks about. You know, we all talk about the throat chakra a lot, or the energy source right in here, and Shoot speaking out. our truth. And sometimes we're just like we don't want conflict. We 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 like to keep the peace, especially us as women. We'd rather see peace than speak our truth and speak our mind. And so this card is just all about speaking your truth. Speak your mind. Tell people what you need from them so that they can help manage your expectations is guess what I'm going to say. So, again, speak your truth. But um, at the bottom of it says always lace your words with love. So if you are having difficulty in anger or in relationships, speaking your truth because you hold it in and then we burst out after this card is for you. It's just learning to speak it as we go, but speak it in a loving fashion and in a loving way. You also got the breathe card. So that tells me there's kind of a lot going on. There's a lot of balls being juggled in the air for you. And this is just your reminder just to pause for a second, take a breath. There's no race to the finish line, right? And it says pause, breathe, and then connect your mind to your soul. So in the breath, in the stillness, in the quietness, is where we connect to our inner selves and our inner being. And that's where you find your peace. Good luck with that. Oh, beautiful, Tracy. I love that. A lot of third house energy there. And what was interesting was I got the opposite house, which was the ninth house. So I think once you do all of the practices that Tracy just described uh, to you, Courtney, you're really going to open the doors for, uh, for travel, for expansion, because this is ruled by Jupiter. It's a really big, beautiful house. It's also foreign religion, something that you're, or, or belief systems, something that's kind of outside of what you grew up with. So it could really lead you down a path towards something new and exciting and finding your spiritual gifts. And, you know, this is also a healing house. So the spiritual gifts that you develop after you really let your voice heard and do that work that Tracy talked about can really lead you down a big, beautiful path of, of healing and, um, uh, you know, of, of helping others. So mm -hmm. I think that's and it's also teaching. So I think that's great. It's love it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Our next person is um i'm gonna go with amanda lou hi amanda lou hi amanda 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 oh press for you Amanda. Okay. all right i'll tell you why in a second but i pulled three for you so the first one i think that you really need to hear it's the strength card and it's just a really beautiful card like i'm just gonna show you because it's the lion right and it's the lion with the crown and this card comes up when it's a reminder for you to remember your read the bottom of it like this quote meant so much to me in my journey and so that's why i put it on these cards but it says you are stronger than you think and more powerful than you believe and so really work on your confidence and knowing what you bring to the table and just kind of believing in yourself right and know that you're a powerful human being with powerful gifts yourself and so Understanding that, knowing that, and most importantly, believing that is faith card. And it says, believe in the unbelievable. So if, to me, that also says like, there's some magic within you, right? There's some gifts that you have that you may be questioning it, if it's real, questioning if it's not real. So I would just say, believe in the unbelievable because I'm promising you it's real, it's real. So good luck on your journey. Remember, find your confidence, okay? Oh, thank you, Tracy. That was so, I love the way you read. It's so beautiful. I, uh, I got Libra. Libra. Now, yes, Libra is, it represents, it's also, it's owned by Venus. So Venus is the goddess of love in uh, Vedic astrology. It's actually a guy. Uh, and uh, he, Libra is about finding balance in your life. So, you know, taking what what Tracy what Tracy said and making it um, balance you balancing your mind by balancing your soul balancing your body finding ways in your daily routine that you can uh, unite those three things that could be you know just doing breathing exercises doing yoga doing things that you know really make you feel grounded and secure and self-confident. Um, another thing about this is it also rules relationships. So finding balance in the relationships around you. If there are people in and around you that are that are breaking you down and causing unbalance in your life, then you, you got to cut them out. You know, that's just you got to set some boundaries and say, you know, you're not allowed to treat me that way. 
fight. And right. you know, they, you can, they can come back in if they respect your boundaries. Okay. So I'm not telling you to ghost anybody, but I am saying that appropriate boundaries are, are necessary for you to really step out into that strength into into yourself and um, you know, be the true you in the world. So I would say, you know, finding, finding that balance and, and you'll know it when your, your Anahata chakra is just glowing and happy and you're, you're able to just be at peace throughout your day. That's how you'll know. But you know, you're, you found that balance. Okay. So I hope that was helpful, Amanda. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Trinity Rose. Trinity. Trinity. This is my first from time Wyoming. here from Wyoming. Hi. Oh. I love a reading. I had many transitions in my life recently, so I'm extremely interested. Okay. Oh, Lordy. Yes. Okay. I got two cards for you. And the first one is all about control control we all want to have it but the only actions that you can control are actually your own and so i would say surrender that's a big word um in a spiritual journey is to surrender and to kind of give up control and let the universe flow and take you where it's meant to take you this is probably why you're going through so many transitions right we're we're letting go of control right? We no longer have it on some situations. And so we're, things are falling to the wayside because of it. But I want you to trust that you're on the right path and that you're being divinely guided exactly where you're exactly. So anytime you're heading somewhere and you're met with resistance, it's time to pivot because that's not where it was supposed to be to begin with, right? And so again, simplicity in living is kind of my big mantra, like make it simple, right? flow flow where the universe takes you i wouldn't worry about six months from now and like who knows that's not even guaranteed ever i would just float through the day every day right and just getting one step closer to any goal that you have okay you also got clarity so clarity is all about finding clarity and what's going on finding what the big purpose behind it is what the big lesson in it was for you, why you're going through so many transitions, what the what's the lesson? And I teach a lot of my clients and students, it's time to zoom out. When we're so close to the problem, it's really hard for us to see clearly what, what it's all about. But if you zoom out, and like I think Michelle talked earlier, detach a little bit emotionally and see the bigger picture and see why things are happening, because they're happening for you, not to you. And once you guess, grasp that concept, life becomes much simpler and easier to navigate. All right. So clarity and control are your two key words for the next six months. I love that you said growth. Okay. So I got Jupiter, which is growth and expansion. Mm -hmm. So again, seeing the world from a much bigger lens is really going to help you out and just right on back with what Tracy said. Now I asked for a little bit of clarification, like how is she growing? How is she expanding? Why is she going through all of these transitions? What are they leading up to? And I got Neptune, okay? Now Neptune is the rose colored glasses that we're walking around with, okay? It's it's the, um, it's the it's our, our way of looking at the world, but it's not reality. So it's looking at a guy and finding out that maybe your Disney prince is in fact the villain. Okay, so it's looking at people for the reality of who they are and not projecting on those people what we want them to be. It could be people, it could be situations in your life. So the expansions and the growths that you are going through and these transitions that you're going through are helping you see things with clarity, see things for exactly what they are, okay? Mm -hmm. So in choosing to see the reality of your situation, you're going to be able to make much better decisions in your career, in your relationships, in, um, just your life in general. And this is also the card of psychic gifts because when you do um, choose to see the reality of everything, you can then go into those more supernatural realms of thinking and learning. So, I mean, I see all of these, you know, very um, kind of upheavals is what I'm getting in your life, upheavals mm -hmm. as taking you down a path that's really going to offer you a lot of, um, a lot of compassion, a lot of, of philanthropy for other people, but also um, a, a more a realistic look at life because, you know, Neptune's really been been clouding, been clouding you for a while and Jupiter's looking to expand you out of that. So that's what I got. Good job. That's great. Great advice. Hope yeah. that helps, Trinity. Absolutely. Yes. So Trinity. our next one is going to be from with Megan and she is up in New York. 
Hey, Yorga. Okay. Welcome. I'm gonna try. We'll see what I get for me again. Okay. So I'm gonna go first. So Megan, 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 Megan. It's all about goals right now. So you got the goals card. It's all about manifesting, setting goals figuring out what direction you want life to go in and then making it happen. Seriously, um, make a plan and execute the plan. So figure out what it is that's missing, what it is that you're wanting to do, but you've never done. And literally I am a big believer in manifestation. And so as you heal, I think your vibration raises and as your vibration raises, you became super, super powerful and you can start manifesting things, right? Like attracts like it's all in science. So, Start writing down your things, write down your goals, write down your dreams, write down the things that you want in life and start using that and your own power to manifest good back into your life. I also got the rejection card and, you know, rejection, being told no or being told you're not good enough or being all those things that happen to us um, throughout life. You know, we can see it as a negative. We can see it as rejection. But I was channeled once and I was told, you know, rejection rejection is redirection that's all that is so don't take it personal it's just meant that that's not meant for you and you're just meant to go in a different direction our guides the universe they guide us right remember i said resistance if it's meeting resistance it's not for you so rejection is simply redirection redirect your narrative re your life we are all meant to have this beautiful beautiful life right um of course it comes with trauma and lessons it's just part of it but we don't have to let it affect us to our core, right? Flow like the water, because it, the water is fine. It's a water card, so flow. All right, Michelle. <laughs> okay, okay, that's beautiful. Well, the first card I got for you, Megan, is the South Node. Now, the South Node uh, is, it's basically, um, it's, it's a lot of anxiety, a lot of trouble. So it's, it's kind of like the things that have been building up karmically that you're now dealing with. And this could be from this, this incarnation or past incarnation. So I, the image that I got was like, you're, you're carrying a, a boulder that you can just set down. You don't have to carry that around. Okay. Put it down. Okay. Because what I got next was the Sagittarius. So that goes right back into what Tracy was saying. Sagittarius is the archer. It's pinpointing exactly what you want in life. And if you look at the constellations, the archer, the centaur is literally pointing his arrow at the crown or the head of the scorpion. Now the scorpion can represent our past lives, the poisons that we're working through. So what I think spirit is asking you to do is to literally do some really big shadow work during this Pluto, Pluto retrograde and conquer those, those. And when I say demons, I mean like the more negative attributes that lie within us that no longer serve us anymore. Okay. It could be, um, it could be the way, you know, you, you speak, it could be a career that's no longer serving you. It could be a person in your life. That's just like, not not working out and not really helping you with your ascension and moving forward so you know doing that um that work will give you the insights that you need to move forward and really pinpoint what you're supposed to be doing and this will not only provide your self-healing but it'll help you heal others because chiron is represented by the wounded healer and his gift lies in um medicine it lies in healing and it could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could even be physical. So um, that, that's what I'm getting for you is this anxiety that might be creeping up on you. Um, just really work through it. Like Tracy said, journal, write things down, um, really pinpoint what those things are. And you'll see your life just, you know, flash forward. Mm -hmm. So I hope that was helpful, Megan. That was beautiful. Good job. Thank you for being on our show. Tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, okay. Well, they can find me. I'm mostly on Instagram. So it's at Astrological Tarot. And I have a link tree with all my links in it. Okay. And um, I'm also Astrological Tarot on YouTube. I just put, made a YouTube channel. There's only one show on there. And I'm like, because I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist with editing. So I'll okay. have more videos up soon. Um, I'm on uh, Astrological Tarot Reader on Facebook. And my website is astrologicaltarot.com. So and they lots can of ways to get a hold of you that way right because yes yes okay. they can okay okay so reach out to her if you guys want like i had a lot of feedback on tiktok people wanting your soulmate reading i told you that's <laughs> the thing that they all want so now every time i get that question i'm saying i have someone for you here go go <laughs> find her <laughs> but yeah thanks for being on the show cassie and i so appreciate it it was Absolutely. wonderful it was wonderful having you on 
Yes. Yeah. This, is, this has been awesome. And um, for our viewers, we do do this every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. So twice a month, you can come and catch us um, here. And um, we just love everybody who's tuned in. And Michelle, thank you so much for coming and being um, our guest. We love this. Yeah. this is amazing. Just yeah. Rosie says hello. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Anytime, anytime. But with that, I think we're out of time. So we're closing down shop and we'll see you guys next time. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.